everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and today I thought we'd take a comprehensive look at setting up and using Auto ISO. This conversation will be specifically for Nikon cameras, but I imagine much of the advice applies to any brand. Also, I do want to apologize for being away from YouTube for so long. I was finishing up my new book, Secrets to Exposure and Metering for Nikon, and it took up all of my attention. Make sure you check it out. I actually think it's probably the best info I've ever produced. Also, I have quite a loaded schedule this year, and I'm planning on doing more articles than videos. So as a heads up, make sure you sign up for my free email newsletter at my site so you never miss any new tips, tricks, or techniques. Plus, it's the only way to learn about new workshops. So let's talk auto ISO. First, what the heck does it do? In short, auto ISO allows a camera to adjust the ISO for you and is incredibly handy when the situation in your viewfinder requires frequent ISO changes. Here's an example from my exposure book that'll help make it a little bit easier to understand. Imagine that you're after a wall hanger of a really cool bird you just discovered on your morning hike. The bird has a nest and is working on a little honeydew list for Mrs. Bird. The trick is, the nest is in the shade and the nesting materials, although nearby, are in the sunlight. You're trying to photograph him in both areas, but each time he moves from one area to another, you have to adjust your ISO to maintain your desired shutter speed. By the time you adjust, the active little guy jumps to the opposite area and a different light level, and you simply can't keep up. This can make you feel more frustrated than a rubber-nosed woodpecker in a petrified forest, but... Auto ISO is here to help. When Auto ISO is enabled, the camera can choose a higher ISO when the bird flies into the shade and drop the ISO again when he goes out into the sun, all while maintaining the shutter speed you desire. Let's break out the camera and talk about setting this up. Note that your options may vary a little, but the information you're about to see will apply to most Nikons. Okay, our first step is to jump into our menu system here, and I have a D850 in my hands right now, but keep in mind that this is pretty much the same with any Nikon camera. You're going to go down to your photo shooting menu, and you're going to look for an item called ISO Sensitivity Settings. Go ahead and click that, and that will bring us to the menu where we can actually go ahead and set not only our ISO sensitivity, but also work on auto ISO sensitivity as well. Now the first item here is our regular ISO sensitivity option here. And this is just your regular non-auto ISO sensitivity setting. Like if you wanted to use the camera at say maybe ISO 200 or something, you just come in here, boom, you have ISO 200. This is the exact same setting that you adjust when you press the ISO button on your camera and spin the command dial to change it there. This is the exact same thing. Now, if you're using auto ISO, I generally recommend setting this to your camera's base ISO, and that's going to be the one right after the last low number there. So in this case, you can see it's at 64 on my D850. On other Nikons, you'll likely be at 100 here. But just find that low setting and go to the first real number that you see there, and go ahead and hit OK, and that will set your ISO for you. Now, the reason the reason I recommend base ISO is that if you're not at base ISO, the camera won't drop below the ISO value you have set until whatever controls the camera's in charge of are completely maxed out. For example, if you were to set this to something like ISO 1600 and were using auto ISO with aperture priority, the camera would have to max out your shutter speed, say maybe one eight thousandth of a second before it would drop below that ISO 1600 that you have set. This can cause situations where you have far more noise than necessary. So again, I recommend keeping this set to base ISO so you have your full range of ISOs available at all times. Okay, next we have auto ISO sensitivity control. Right now on my camera it's off. I'm going to go ahead and go in here and just turn that on. By the way, once you have everything set up in this menu below, I don't recommend doing this before all this is set, but once you have all your stuff down here set the way you want it, you can actually turn your auto ISO control on or off by using the ISO button on your camera in conjunction with the front command dial, the sub command dial. You can use that to toggle it on or off. It's very, very handy and I use it all the time with manual with auto ISO so I can go from full manual to manual with auto ISO very quickly, very easily. So, But that's all there is to that menu setting. Next we have maximum sensitivity and this is where people like to make mistakes. There's actually two mistakes people make with auto ISO and that's setting a really low maximum 
ISO sensitivity, maybe like at 400 or something like that, and then setting a really high minimum shutter speed. And that combination just never works out. We'll talk about the shutter speed here in a moment, but let's go back to maximum sensitivity. What I tell people for maximum sensitivity is to pick the maximum ISO that you can tolerate. And by that, I don't mean like that you would like to tolerate, that you really can tolerate. For example, if you were out in the woods and you're walking along a trail and a unicorn pops out of the woods and there's a couple of monkeys with tambourines dancing on its back, what ISO would be so high that you go ahead and trash those photos anyway? Whatever that number is, pick the one below it. In my case, for my D850, I like ISO 6400, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now, I know you're probably wondering, gee, Steve, you know, what ISOs do you use for other cameras? Let me show you. I'll put a little slide up right now. And these are the settings that I recommend. These are kind of a starting point. These are my personal settings. These are the ones that I like and that I can tolerate and that I get the kind of detail that I want. And, you know, some people are perfectly happy at higher ISOs. Some people are happier at lower ISOs. And, you know, part of this depends on your ability to do noise reduction. I have a noise reduction video workshop that can help with that. I'll put a card up there for you to take a look at that if you want. But my recommendation here is to pick the ISO that you are the most comfortable with. That you, you know, if you go any higher than that, you just can't tolerate it. And, you know, it depends on your subject, too. I am really concerned about fur and feather detail. And the truth is, when you start getting to really stratospheric ISOs, a lot of times the noise can overwhelm the fine detail in fur and feathers. There's just no getting around it. And noise reduction can't really help because if the noise has obscured and destroyed that detail to begin with, then there's not really anything you can do to really truly bring it back. You can make it look better and you can kind of fake it sometimes, but it'll never be perfect. So pick the ISO that seems to work best for you. Next we have maximum sensitivity with flash. And right now I just have it set to match the one as same without flash. So I just, you know, 6400, it's fine. The truth is I don't use auto ISO with flash ever. I just shut auto ISO off when I'm using flash. I find I get better results. I find auto ISO and flash can sometimes be a bit unpredictable and I don't like to chase it around. I just set the ISO that I need and fire away. Next, we have minimum shutter speed, and in aperture priority or program mode, the camera will stay at or above this setting as long as it has the ISO to do it. However, if the light is dim and the camera hits your maximum ISO sensitivity, which we have set here at 6400, if it hits that, then it will drop the shutter speed to compensate and avoid underexposure. Otherwise, it will stay at the shutter speed you have here in our example 1 500th of a second or higher as the light allows. Note that this setting only applies when the camera is in charge of setting the shutter speed, as mentioned with aperture priority or program. This setting has absolutely zero effect and is completely ignored in both shutter priority and manual mode with auto ISO since you're setting the shutter speed in both of those modes yourself. Now, if you are using Aperture Priority or Program, you do need to set this, and it's another place where people tend to get into trouble. The thing is, when people dive into this menu, they tend to pick far faster shutter speeds than they really need, and then they never revisit those settings. In fact, that's one of the reasons why when Auto ISO is brought up that there's often someone complaining about how it makes their photos too noisy. The thing is, if you want to use a given f-stop and shutter speed for a given light level, the ISO you need is the same same regardless of how it's set. For example, let's say you're in aperture priority and wanted to shoot at f8 and you have your minimum shutter speed set to, instead of 1 500th of a second, we have it up at 1 4000th of a second. To balance that exposure, maybe auto ISO sets the camera to ISO 6400. Now let's say you're setting your ISO manually and wanted that same 1 4000th of a second at f8 exposure. In that case, no surprise, you'd still need ISO 6400. The ISO setting is 100% based on your other exposure settings and the current light level, not on who sets it, you or the camera. However, and this is where people get into trouble, if you force the system to use 1 4000th as a minimum speed went, you know, if you were setting it yourself, you choose something like 1 250th of a second, then the camera must use an ISO that's four stops faster to compensate for the extra speed you requested here in the minimum shutter speed menu. For our example, this is the difference between ISO 400 and 6400. When you fail to take this into account, it would seem like auto ISO is making the images noisier when, in fact, it's this really high shutter speed you selected under the minimum shutter speed setting that's causing the problem, especially, again, if you would have 4,000th of a second in here, and in reality, you probably should have been way down here at 1 250th of a second. 
My advice is to pick an appropriate shutter speed for the subject at hand and as needed, just come back to this menu and change it. Now another option found here in the minimum shutter speed settings menu, if we scroll all the way up to the top, you can see that there is an auto option as well. Let's go ahead and give that a click. If you have the ca Some cameras will have this, some won't. If you have it, it'll be all the way up here at the top. This setting allows you to tell the camera you want to favor faster or slower shutter speeds, but that you're not married to any single speed. When in the middle, it tends to favor shutter speeds in the traditional one over focal length range rule, uh, depending on the light level, of course. So typically, if you put like a 105 millimeter lens on the camera, with this setting, it will give you a shutter speed of something like 1 100th of a second. As you go faster or slower, this adjusts accordingly. For example, it seems to favor roughly a shutter speed four times the focal length when set here to the faster setting and allows you something like instead of one one hundredth of a second that we just did, it would go one four hundredth of a second. Just keep in mind the system also has to work within the confines of the ambient light level, the your maximum ISO, and your exposure settings as well. So this isn't a hard and fast rule, just kind of a guideline so you kind of know what this thing is doing. Okay, so I'm going to back out of here. I'm just going to set my shutter speed back down here to five hundredth of a second. And that about does it for this menu. Let's talk about how Auto ISO works with our various exposure modes next. Okay, that's the menu setup. Now let's talk about how this interacts with your various exposure modes. When Auto ISO is enabled, the camera will always try to use your normal ISO setting first, along with the exposure controls it manages. It will only dip into other ISOs when it can no longer maintain your requested shutter speed or maintain the proper exposure level. For example, in aperture priority, the camera will stay at your normal ISO sensitivity setting as long as it's bright enough to stay at or above the minimum shutter speed you have set in your ISO sensitivity menu. For instance, let's say our minimum shutter speed is set to 1 500th of a second with our normal ISO sensitivity setting at ISO 100. We'll say it's a bright sunny day. Our lens is set to f4, so this means the camera needs to use 1 1600th of a second to get an exposure proper brightness at ISO 100. Cool, right? As the light gets dimmer, the camera will drop that shutter speed to lower and lower levels, staying at ISO 100 until it can no longer maintain our requested 1 500th of a second minimum shutter speed at that ISO. At that point, it will begin to increase ISO to maintain our requested 1 500th of a second, and it will continue to raise ISO until it hits our maximum ISO cap. Once it hits that cap, the camera will allow the shutter speed to drop below our requested 1 500th of a second minimum shutter speed to avoid underexposure, at least on Nikon cameras made in the last 8 to 10 years. On older Nikons, it would actually stay at 1 500th of a second and simply underexpose when it ran out of ISO. For shutter priority, it works in much the same way, except the camera will use f-stops rather than shutter speeds. Let's say we were doing our last sunny day example, but in shutter priority mode this time. In this case, we're going to set 1 500th of a second as our shutter speed using our command dial. Now remember, as a reminder here, the camera ignores that minimum shutter speed that you set in your ISO sensitivity menu when you're using shutter priority since you're setting the shutter speed. Now in this case, the camera set the f-stop to f7.1 for our normal ISO setting of 100. This time, as the day grows dimmer, the camera opens up the lens a little at a time until it reaches the widest stop available, in this case f4. Once it no longer has any more f-stops, then it turns to ISO and starts to increase it as the day gets dimmer and dimmer. Now the trick here is that once the camera reaches your maximum ISO setting and shutter priority, it has nowhere else to turn. It can't open the lens anymore and it can't go beyond your maximum ISO setting, so it's forced to underexpose. Now, program mode works like a combination of the first two. It will use both f-stop and shutter speed to stay at or above the minimum shutter speed you requested in the ISO sensitivity menu, and then turn to ISO once the lens is wide open and it's too dark to maintain your requested minimum shutter speed at your normal ISO sensitivity setting. Once it hits your max ISO cap, it will then drop the shutter speed in order to maintain a proper level of brightness, just like it did in aperture priority. Finally, we have manual plus auto ISO, and this one is a little different. In this case, the camera only controls ISO. It has no control over shutter speed or f-stop since you're setting those yourself. So the camera will float the ISO to give you a proper level of brightness at the shutter speed and f-stop you select. 
as long as the brightness of the scene falls between your base ISO and your max ISO setting, you're good to go. If it falls outside of that range, the camera will either over or underexpose since it can't take control of any other setting. Now there's a lot more to Manual Plus Auto ISO and I have a complete video that talks all about it. It's my favorite auto exposure mode and really the only auto exposure mode I use for wildlife. I'll put a link to the video for it in the card above if you'd like to learn how it works. So there you go, not too difficult and when used properly, auto ISO can be a powerful tool. For even more information on auto ISO as well as hundreds of other exposure and metering related topics, be sure to check out my new exposure metering book. It's 670 pages that are filled with tips, techniques, and tricks just like these to help you get the most from both your exposure controls and your metering system. Thanks so much for watching and remember to stop by the site and sign up for that free email newsletter. Again, I'm planning way more articles this year than videos, so if you want to keep on top of all my latest tips and techniques, the email newsletter is 100% the best way to go. I hope you'll sign up. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.